Hi everyone and welcome to Classical Posing and Portrait Lighting. I'm your host Joe Brady and before we get started I want to go over a little bit of the mechanics. First of all, as always, this is a live video broadcast. That means kind of heavy bandwidth requirements on occasion. So if you lose our audio or you lose the signal, don't worry, this is being recorded. We'll have a full HD version available for you for download and also there's a chat room. Make sure you take advantage of that. We're going to take some questions live during today's broadcast. Today is going to be completely live. Uh, we're going to have uh, Frank Dispenza on the set. I'll introduce Frank in just a minute. And we're going to do portrait and lighting and metering to make sure everything is perfect. Now, classical posing and lighting. I've heard people for several years saying, oh, they don't want to do posing, they want to do photojournalism. Well, that's all well and fine, but knowing how to pose is really critical. And even if you're not going to do posing, if you're going to sit and wait for someone to do something, knowing how to do this posing and knowing what is the correct body position and shape and head tilt and rotation is what's going to allow you to capture those beautiful photojournalistic images. People actually do want to be posed. They want to look their best. And that's what we're going to learn about today. So take advantage of the chat room. We'll take your questions live. And again, this is being recorded. I'd like to introduce our guest photographer today, Frank Dispenza. I've known Frank for many years. Frank uh, and I share uh, both a passion of photography, um, a passion, well, particularly Frank, a passion for really bad jokes, <laughs> and uh, uh, kind of a, a repartee of verbal abuse that we've always had back and forth towards each other. And uh, we plan on continuing that today during this live broadcast. So we always like to have fun when we're doing this. You guys have seen this stuff before. We're, we're light. We have fun. And ask us questions, and uh, we'll have a lot of fun. So let me introduce Frank, Frank Dispenza. Thanks, Good Frank. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming in. You can leave now. I have <laughs> actually learned a lot from this man. Uh, he taught me how to add f-stops, and he, made, he finally stopped when my eyes started to bleed. Absolutely. So, uh, but a really important thing to know. So, Frank, what are, we, what are you going to do today? We're going to take Bethany, and we're going to take Phil, and we're going to show you from ground zero good body language that makes the female feminine and the male masculine. All right. And we're going to show you the right and wrong so you can appreciate the difference. That's, that's an important difference, too. When you get to see wrong, uh, you'll really understand a lot better when you see, oh, yes, that does look better. And we're in a studio today. We're doing studio lights, but everything we're doing would apply wherever you are. Absolutely. And when we bring Beth and, and uh, Steph, Beth. Bethany, yes. Bethany and Phil on here, that's the right. The wrong is here already. You've seen it. Now go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So why don't we invite Bethany out? You ready to get started? I, I will. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll get out of the way. Good afternoon. Thank you, uh, Sakonic, for uh, sponsoring this. This is really nice. So let's start off with Bethany. Have a seat, Bethany. The goal of the body language, the classical body language, is to create balance. Watch. Stand up a minute. Flat to the camera, arms at your side. You can't get any worse than this. You take a pretty young lady like this, and put her flat to the camera, hands at her side. As soon as we see the line that goes down through the middle of the face, line up with the breastbone, and we have vertical lines or horizontal lines in the body language, it becomes boring and static. It becomes boring and static. So if we take Bethany and turn her with your feet, put that foot out to the side, as soon as we do that, now hands at the side. As soon as we do that, we create a far shoulder and a near shoulder. And when Bethany puts her weight on her left foot, this shoulder drops. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for a high near shoulder and a far low shoulder. Okay? It's no longer static. And then we take that center line and we turn the face so that it's off center. Now we, we start to get some dynamic looks to it, okay? So now, we got vertical arms here. Just for the heck of it. Put your hands on your hips. Great. Put this foot out to the side. Heel down. Point the toe that way. Good. Now, here's contraposing. We have the low shoulder, high shoulder, near shoulder, far shoulder. We're going to take this hip and turn it this way. 
and then open up the shoulder. Ah, that gives her a nice swagger, if you will. Very nice. Now, how much do you turn them? Well, she's very petite, okay? We don't turn her too far, because if we do, turn that way, if we turn her too far, the balance doesn't look good. You'll know from camera position how much to turn or not to turn. A heavier set model, you would turn a little bit more, okay? So now let's look at, turn back to the normal position. Look at the hands. The hands are on the hips, which gives us diagonal lines. That's what we're looking for. We love diagonal lines. But wait a minute now. We have a low shoulder and a high shoulder. Yet the hands form a horizontal line. Okay? So if we leave this down here and move that one higher, now we match the shoulder line. Am I in the way of the camera? Occasionally. Okay. You're also off camera as well. That's all right. That's even better. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> so the low shoulder, high shoulder, low hand matches. Now switch the hands. That's contradictory to what we want to see. And if you gave your client two pictures, one this way, switch it, and one this way, with the expression staying the same, most of them would pick the right one, but they don't know why they picked it. Okay? So, looking good. Yep, turn a little bit more. Open up that shoulder. That's good. So, now turn that heel in. That's it right there. So now we, we, we have a good representation of her standing. Again, take that center line of her face, turn, 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 turn. Our main light is on this side. So we want, for the feminine composition, which we're showing here, we want the light to go across the garment. We wouldn't pose her the opposite way if the main light is there. So it goes across, across the garment. She's now in a two-thirds view. Put all of your hair on this side. Excellent. If we're going to have hair on one side or the other, make the hair flow with the low shoulder. Okay? Very nice. Let's have the guy now. Phil, come on up here. Have a seat. Again, let's start off with hands at your side. Okay, here again, boring and static. Turn this way, Phil. There you go. Put your weight on your right foot. That's it. Now, tip the top of your head this way, turn this way. Great, right there. Turn your face back this way. Perfect. Now, again, with Phil we have a low shoulder and a high shoulder, but notice that we turned him towards the light. For the male composition, we want to hit, the, hit him flatly in the chest. We don't want to go across the garment. So with Bethany, this was her far shoulder, low shoulder. With Phil, this is the far shoulder, low shoulder, high shoulder, near shoulder, with the main light still on that side. But we got to be very careful now with the male composition. Notice the head tilt. You talk to someone standing there, that's the normal attitude of the head, straight up and down. But that's more graceful than we want to portray the male. Watch what happens when we tip the head correctly. Tip the top of your head slowly, right there. Turn the face. Beautiful. If you want a rule of thumb, you can see it when you practice it, but you want a rule of thumb. As this shoulder line drops, and there's a diagonal line here, make the line that goes down through the center a perpendicular line to that. Let's do it again. Tip. Turn. No, 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 I'm sorry. Just the face. boy. Turn the nose. Right. Tip a little bit more. I'll exaggerate. It gets cutesy for the guy. Turn and tip. Right there. That's a much better. Open up the jacket. Up here with the left hand. Over here with the right hand. That's it. In the pocket. Thumb out. Okay, now this coincides with the low shoulder, far shoulder, low hand, high hand, 
high shoulder. It forms a diagonal line with the dark clothing between the two hands, matching the slope of the shoulders. So the classical rules of portraiture really, really, I mean, it's timeless. You go back to the Renaissance painters, the, the sculptors, they all did exactly what we're doing. That's where we copied all the information from. And we found that, hey, it looks better. Okay? So now, let's bring back Bethany. And we're going to show how we do the female sitting. Have a seat. Excellent. Uh, put your hair temporarily all the way back. Okay. So now, we can't put the weight on the back foot, but we can actually cheat a little bit. Lean forward. We want the person to sit tall and lean forward when they're sitting. Here's another thing. Bethany, stand up and then sit all the way back on the stool. Okay. Turn this way a little bit more. Good. Now when you do that, especially on a regular chair, we make the thighs get a little bit bigger when you sit all the way back in the chair. So we never want to do that. So sit towards the end more. You don't hear that a lot? No. Make my butt look no, 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 no. I never hear that a lot. <laughs> okay, stand up a minute. We're going to show something else here. Watch. We're going to make the posing stool a little bit higher. See if that's good. Sit on the end. Okay. When we make the posing stool higher, put that foot on the ground, we have a diagonal line from the hip down to the knee. Okay? We want diagonal lines. We don't want horizontal lines. When we lower the posing stool, we get a horizontal line cross this leg over the top. Now, if we're going to cross legs, this is the way to cross them. Go the opposite way. Actually, you want to hold off. People are asking, they'd like to see this. So what we need to do is, uh, we need to get a camera down. So actually, if you're going to describe it from over here, folks are asking, they'd like to see what's going on with the feet. Okay. So, Zoom in on those. Okay. okay. That's good. Now, if we're showing a full length here, that shoe is going to get a little bit bigger than it should compared to the face. Okay? But if we cross the legs the other way, now the foot is more in line with her face when she leans forward. And this, this foot will never be exaggerated in size. Okay? So good. That is correct. Let's talk about hands. Oh, wait. Turn the face. Turn. Chin down. Good. Put your hands on your hips just for now. Okay. Turn, turn. Chin down. Okay. She is in the feminine composition. Why? Let's go over that. It's so important. Low shoulder, high shoulder. The line going down through the middle of her face is not lined up with her breastbone. Turn this way with your knees just a little bit. Right there. Good. And she's turned to the near high shoulder. She's turned to the near high shoulder. If we put Phil in this position, it would be very feminine. He wants to be turned to the low shoulder. We're going to demonstrate him in the next uh, session here. So it's really, really important that we keep the female when we want to portray her gracefully. Now, the girl is ambidextrous. We can pose the girl in the masculine composition or the feminine composition. And I'll show you with Phil when we do either feminine or masculine with the female and why. Okay, let's have Phil. Thank you. Okay. A couple questions. Yes. Already coming through. Let's step back for a second and talk about the lighting setup. Good. Because people are asking about that. Let's talk about the light. I'll, I'll give them an overview and you, you do the metering. Okay. In this situation, the first thing you do in the studio is pick a working aperture. Uh, we're shooting today at f11. It's a pretty tight aperture. We, we, really don't need, we really don't need f11. We could have shot at f8. But if you pick f11, a nice contrast ratio between the main light and the fill light. Fill light's on camera axis. Main light's at a 45 degree angle. Okay? Fill light's going to be 5.6. Main light, when metered by itself, is f8.6. 
Okay? Now we say F8.6. Really, technically, on paper, it's F8.5. But like shooting pool with the main light there, the light hits him. Some of it gets lost this way and is not picked up on the camera. That's about one tenth of a stop. So for the main light to contribute on the chip in the camera, F8.5, we make it F8.6. Okay? So we're going to meter the lights, okay. and Joe will take over. So we've got our two lights here. We have a main. People are asking, main with a big beauty dish over on the side. We've got a soft box up above that's acting as a fill. So we're going to do each of our lights separately. Go ahead. First, sure. all right. And point the meter towards each individual yes. light. So again, that's where the dome in, dome out thing comes. We're going to do dome in to measure each of our lights individually. I can even put myself in between this light and come over here and take my reading. And I've got F8 and 1 tenth over here. We want F8 and 6, right? Correct. So we're going to bring that one up. Eight and seven tenths. So we're going in, we're going for real accurate. We're going for actually to a tenth of a stop. So that's we have the meter set for tenths rather than thirds. Um, what we're going to find out for our camera later is we'll put the dome out. We'll take a reading back to the camera position, and then that will give us our actual reading to put into the camera. All right. So that was F eight and eight. So we want eight and six. Okay. We have F eight and six tenths. Now I want to measure. This light here, if I remember right, that was our A light, correct? Our uh, fill light back here. So let's go ahead. In fact, I'm even going to turn off to make it easy. We're using uh, uh, Prophoto D1s, by the way. I've got the air system here, so it. Did I lose? Oh, I lost my mic. Sorry about that. Here we go. Am I back? Oh, I'm back. Okay, I'm back. I lost. Sorry about that. I lost my mic there for a second. Um, so I'm going to measure this light. These are Prophoto D1s again. I'm using a Sekonic 478 DR meter and the Prophoto Air system. So I'm going to take my reading back to my, oh, let me get my main again. All right, let me turn that down a little bit. Again, we're going for Frank Wands F8 and 6 tenths, right, Correct. Frank? Okay, there we go, F8 and 6 tenths. So I'm going to turn this light off for a second. And I can do that right from here. Just turn that head off and take the reading just back to the fill light. And that is five, six, and one tenth. You wanted five, six. Five, six. So I'll just hit the button once, the power button once on here, take my reading, and I get five, six, and zero. So now you want a reading with them both together back sure. to the camera. So let me turn my uh, main light back on. And now is when we'll go ahead and put the dome out to get the contribution on his face back towards the camera position. So I'll take my reading here. And what, did, what were you after? F11. And I'm coming in a little low. Hold on a second here. There we go, 11 and 1 tenth. Close enough. Close enough. So we're a tenth of a stop. You just put your camera on F11 and good to go. So take G over. Just one more thing about our lighting. People may ask, well, why 5, 6, and F8 and a half? How does that equal F11? Real quickly, I choose to make F11 with a stop and a half difference between the fill light of 5, 6 and the main light of F8.5 because the contrast ratio on the face for general portraiture is correct. If we had a cowboy here, a rough and tumble cowboy, dressed in really old clothes, like he's been out in the, out in the mountains for, for months, and he's got bloodshot eyes and everything, you want high contrast, we may make the main light and fill light two and a half stops difference to give a darker shadow side, okay? And the, all the reason for lighting is, is we want to light the five planes of the face with the main light. The five planes are as such, the forehead, a line down the nose, the front of both cheeks, and the front of the chin. Those are the five points, the mask of the face that we want to light with the main light. The fill light on camera axis kind of a very weak light lights from top to bottom, left to, left to right, flat lighting. The fill light is always on camera axis. So 5.6 plus F8.5 is F11. Okay? So let's go on. Uh, I'll need that posing table. If Alrighty. you could clean it off. So sit tall, Phil. Lean forward. I'll take care of that. 
Lean forward. That's it. And let's give him something, because we want diagonal lines. I'm going to lower that just a little bit so we drop that. So, no, I'm going to, yeah, correct. Go ahead. That's good. Thank you. Turn the face. Lean forward a little bit with your whole body. That's it. Now, again, turn the face this way. Tip the head slightly. Feminine composition there. Notice that his head is straight up and down. He's got a far shoulder, high shoulder, near shoulder. This line has to be perpendicular to this. So tip over, tip over. Good. Now there's a big difference in attitude. Look at me, Phil. Turn the nose this way slightly. There's a big difference in attitude there, a position of strength rather than, turn the nose, a position of grace. Turn, tip, right there. Let's talk about hands. The female wrist, as we're going to show you later, is always bent. It's either bent down or up, but not for the male. If we take this hand and make this horizontal, it looks, looks out of character. If we make it perfectly vertical, it looks out of character. But if we turn it at a 45 degree angle and drop it slightly, Okay, good. Let's take this hand here and put it right here. Good, right there. Now we got the, the perfect male sitting, right? Bethany, would you do me a favor? Just stand over his shoulder, his right shoulder. Come in close. Put your arm around his shoulder. Put your hand a little bit out further that way. Yeah, there we go. Now, Bethany is so petite that I lose balance there because we hide a lot of her body. Now, if Bethany was a full-figured model, this would be a great pose. Lean forward. There you go. Excellent. Now we got two people. Just turn your body this way, Bethany. That's good. Put the hand out this way. Good. And this hand should flow. We like to show the side of the female hand, not the front. And we never want the thumb to get too far away from the index finger. There you go. And then, as they get to know each other, we can actually take and put it under there. And we can move you closer to his head. That's it, exactly. And we would put all of your hair on this side. No, all of your hair on this side. All of it. There you go. Okay, go back into that. You know, get close. Okay, good. Turn your face this way. No, not you, I'm sorry. Turn your face this way. No, just the nose. Good. Tip. Right there. Can I take that shot, Frank? Yes, take that shot. Can go ahead and get that. <clears throat> Sweetheart, just tip your head and touch him right there. Okay, right at me. Beautiful. Excellent. Okay, so, Bethany, have a seat. Let's do something where we get them nice and close here. Stand up a minute. Bethany, come on over here. We're going to do facial views right now. Phil, have a seat. I'm going to lower this just a little bit for you, Beth. Have a seat. Turn the knees this way. Put your elbow up on here. That's good. That way. Good. Cross this knee over the top. Now, turn this way just a little bit. Very good. Now, Bethany has got full face right here. If we can put your hair behind your ears so we can demonstrate. Okay. Bethany is full face. That's perfect. Now, even lower. Okay, so hold it right there. Can you zoom in on her face? Yes? Okay. Notice, chin down. Notice if we have the chin too far down, 
Look up here. We get white canoes under her eyes. See the white underneath? The iris, the colored part of the eye, is not touching the bottom lid. You got to be real careful. Some people show that canoes underneath real easy. They don't have to look too high. Be careful in close-up photography. You don't want the canoes. Okay? Perfect. Turn the face. Tip. Okay. Now she's in the masculine connotation. Think about it. The far shoulder. The far shoulder is this one. The low shoulder. The high shoulder is this one. And she's tipped to the far low shoulder. She's in the masculine connotation. When she was in the feminine connotation, her body language was that way, and she turned back to the light. Now, <clears throat> so turn your nose. Right now, she's exactly full face. Take the, your, left, your left hand and just behind your ears. There you go. That's good. Thank you. What is full face? We got a close up of the full face? Am I? Yeah. <clears throat> if you turn around, you can actually see the two monitors. The one on the right is the one broadcasting. OK. Can we zoom in on her face? OK. When we're full face, we are actually looking directly at her full face. The only time I would change it one way or the other is if one ear stuck out a little bit more than the, than the, than the other. And in this case, she doesn't. Put your hair behind you. There you go. Her ears are perfect, <laughs> just like the rest of her. OK, here we go. So she's perfect. We, we could adjust that by going like this or like this. OK, so full face is easy to understand. Two thirds now is not as easy. Some people refer to it as three-quarter view of the face. So let's turn the face. Whoop, tip the head. Perfect. Now, what is a good two-thirds? We do not take the corner of the eye and break the skin line that comes down this side of the eye. We have a close-up. Turn the face this way. There we go, chin down. Much easier when you look at the monitor. Oh. Yeah, that's why you know what it might work if you stand here. Stand here and and Absolutely. pose her from uh, the camera rather than from there. I'm doing good here. Okay. Eyes here. Okay. Excellent. Now, I want you to turn the face. Notice how we're breaking the skin line now. Eyes back to the camera here. See how we broke the skin line on this side here? We broke the skin line. So. The working area for a good two-thirds is, do not break the skin line, turn back. Right there. We're showing a piece of skin on that side of the eye. Now, watch. I'm going to move her face. Oop, back, 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 back. Right, up, right here. Right there. Now she's almost in two-thirds, but you notice we see a piece of her right ear hanging off the right side of her face. Not nice. So let's go right there. Now, the window of acceptance is don't show the hidden ear and don't break the skin line. But there's a few degrees in there that you could play with. And what are we playing with? What are we looking for? The goal is, is to show the notch between the brow and the, and the high cheekbone. Watch. Go this way. No good. Too far. Go this way. Right. Oh, that's flat. Right there, right there. If we could zoom in on that, you see the notch right here, that chiseled look right there. There's a notch. If we move it just a, a degree or so, this way, no, right there. Stay there. Move it back this way, this way, this way. There's the notch. It straightens out a little bit right there before we start to see the ear. Right there. Back. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Oh, right there. There's a window, in her it's pretty tight, where you either see the ear or you see the notch. In a lot of people, okay, there's a big window of acceptance, and you can go a lot 
before you have that notch straighten out. So look for the notch if it's there, seriously. It gives that chiseled look, especially in a close-up. Okay? So let's lean over with the arm. That's it. Good. So that's full face and two-thirds. Next we're going to do is profile. So I'm going to have you swing around, put your knees that way, cross the, the leg over. Yeah. That's good. There are two positions for profile. This is called over the shoulder, obviously. Over the shoulder. We could turn her body 180 degrees this way and put that elbow out there. No, 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 this way. Put that elbow out there. Turn the body a little bit more. Turn into profile. No, 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 just the face. Okay. Just the face. Look that way, all the way. All the way, turn the body a little bit more. This way. Yes. That's it. Now this would be called, let's call it for, let's call it open chest compared to over the shoulder, right? For the female, we could pose her either way, over the shoulder, which is a lot more feminine, or this, which is a lot more masculine. But the male, as we're gonna show you with Phil, we only do this position, not over the shoulder for the male, okay? So it's very, very important. Again, put your hand on your hip just for a second. Good. And when we do the profile, we want to tip the head slightly towards camera. The top of your head. That's it, right there. Camera angle. When you're photographing in the studio and you're doing a close-up, the eyes must be in the top third of the photograph. Don't let the eyes sink down into halfway down the frame. It gets boring and static. Okay, so let's talk about the lighting. Come back to me for full face. No, no, just stay right, just the face, okay? In full face, we have the main light. You may not be able to see this, but the main light is right there. Now, when she goes to two thirds, the main light is attached to her forehead, if you will. The main light moves with the face. Look at the camera. Tip. Okay, right there. Don't move. That's perfect. Look back. The main light moves with the face. So now when we go to profile, the main light moves with the face. Go into profile. And the main light goes all the way back here. Tip the top of your head towards the camera. There you go. Now this is very important. Can we have a close-up of her face? Perfect. Notice we're lighting the mask of the face right now. We go highlight, less highlight, less highlight, and then the fill light takes over and we break into shadow. If we allow the model to look straight ahead, all we see from camera angle is a white triangle. We don't see the colored part of the iris. If we take the eyes and shift it to here, now the camera position shows the round colored part of her eye. And that's what we want. So she doesn't look straight ahead, she looks about five or six degrees off to one side. Okay? When we photograph the Asians or or African Americans, they usually have a shallow bridge to their nose, which works out very good if you want to do Rembrandt lighting. But you got to be very careful in profile that you don't see the eyelid of the opposite eye. If you see the eyelash of the opposite side, that's desirable, but not the lid. Let's push the hair to one. Yeah, that side. Okay, that's good. Yes. So, let's do the... Yeah. <clears throat> Just keep an eye on the camera here so you can see where you're standing in proportion to uh, Bethany. Excellent. Yeah, that's what we want. Notice that the skin line that goes from the forehead 
down through the nose is not interrupted by an eyebrow. Okay? Bethany, turn that way just a touch. Come, see, go even a little bit more. Go a little bit more. Now we're breaking that skin line with the eyebrow. Not good. Come back, come back, come back, come back, come back. Right there. Perfect. That's a very, very good. The composition is wrong. It's too close. You know, we only chopped her off at the neck, but that's okay. We want to show the lighting on the face. Stay right there. I'm going to adjust the lighting because the video camera is not on our still photography axis. So, Frank, when you're doing this, what do you change your ratios when you go from profile to full? No. Okay. No. The question was, do we change the ratios? No, the fill light is still 5.6, the main light is contributing f8.5, and, and it's still f11, okay? What I do in the studio is I put little dots on the floor, so when I move the light, it's always the same distance from the subject, and I don't have to keep re-metering and re-metering, okay? So let's uh, bring up Phil again. Come on, Phil. Assume your position, like you did before. Now. Again, put your elbow out there, go into profile. Tip the top of your head to me. There you go. So let's look at the uh, camera here. Turn your face towards me, Phil, just a little bit. Whoa, too much, slowly, go back the other way, right there. Notice the clean line now going down from his forehead, down through his nose, and we don't break that skin line with an eyebrow. Looks great. See, these are easy models to work with. Turn to me, Phil, just a touch. Right there. And the lighting is good. Notice we go from highlight on the nose to shadow on the nose to highlight on the front of the cheek and then back into the fill light. So that, that's, good. that's good lighting and that's a perfect uh, profile. Phil, would you tip the top of your head toward the camera, toward me? Even more. Turn your nose away from me just a little bit. Right there. Perfect, Phil. A little happier, Phil. I know we're making you work hard. Yeah, Brittany's going to be in the uh, Brittany. Bethany's going to be in the, in the picture with you shortly. Okay, that's a much better expression. So, let's bring Bethany. Who's that? No, we're going we're gonna to actually change. Just stay right there because you look good on camera. You know, we've got to make up for him. Stand up. <laughs> Stand up. Stand up. Mm -hmm. You, you swap sides, swap sides. Okay. Oh, does your feet hurt? Okay, that's okay. Frank, while you're setting up, someone had an interesting question asked about, would you ever want to show the eyelashes or a little bit of eye on the far side of the That face? is correct. I, I thought we went over that, but let me reiterate. Especially for the female. If we conform and not break the skin line with the eyebrow, and you see part of the long eyelash on the far eye. Very nice. But make sure you don't show a piece of the lid with it. It gets, it gets feisty real quick. Eyelash, yes, if it's available, without breaking the rest of the rules. And you're going to see the eyelash a lot in the Asian and African American because they have shallow bridges. Okay? And you've got to be very careful with the lighting with shallow bridges. But that's for a lighting class, and we won't go over that right now. So let's put two people together here. Turn this way. Put your arm around her. Put your arm under him and around his waist. Good. Put, put your weight on that foot. Yes. And put the other foot out to the side. On the floor. That's it right there. Good. Hand on your hip. Here's what you don't want to do. Don't show these fingers coming around the edge here. Put your hand on her back. Okay, good. Now, here's a common mistake made when we're posing him and her together. In order for their heads to come together, watch. Tip, tip. See, their heads are too far apart and they can't get together because their hips are too close. Watch, stand up. Turn this way. Get a little closer to her. Right there. Now, arms around each other. No, don't get too close. That's the whole of that. Now, lean towards each other, which, even with your hips. Even with your hips. There you go. There you go. Now, the tops of them come together naturally because we didn't put the, the trunk of their bodies together. They can lean towards each other. 
Now here's something very important. Watch this, psychologically, if you take anything from this, remember this. Phil, turn your face. Tip your head. Turn your face. Good. Phil is, is full face to the camera. Bethany is full face to the camera. Psychologically, he does not acknowledge she's even there. That's hard to believe, seriously, all right? We have to have the taller person. Joe, would you move that light sure. into main light position? We have to have the taller person, the person further away from the light source. Why did we have him on this side? If the main light's there, we've hit him flatly in the chest, and for her, it goes across the garment for the female, okay? Now, the taller person, watch this. I'm in the way, I'm not. The taller person there. Phil, turn your nose to her. Tip your head to her. Sweetheart, tip your head to him. She's full face. Phil, back this way just a touch. Tip. Together, close, close. That's it, right there. He now acknowledges that she's there because he's turned from full face to two-thirds. His body language says she's there. He acknowledges it. Two full faces like that, they're two separate, two separate pictures, okay? Now, it would be nice, Brittany, turn Definitely. your face, turn your face. Brittany, yeah, Definitely. I know, Definitely. I know, but she's on Definitely. the witness protection Definitely. program. We got to change her name every three minutes. Bethany, turn your face. Okay, now when she's two thirds to him, they acknowledge each other, but the lighting can't be correct for both of them. So go back to full face, full face, tip your head. Okay, she's full face. He's two-thirds, he acknowledges with his body language that she's there. Open up that button there, Phil. We don't want vertical lines. Put your hand in your pocket. Exactly. So now we have, we have a very, very nice uh, portrait. It should be cropped. We've got to talk about cropping. We can, we can have a full length or we can have a two-thirds. We've got to crop about one-third above the knees. Right about in here. Okay? We never want to crop at a joint. It doesn't look good. So again, let's, let's review just real quickly. Far shoulder, low shoulder, high shoulder, near shoulder. Same for her. Far, high, near. She's tipped to him, right? He's tipped to her. He's two-thirds. She's full face. Now, supposing that Phil here wasn't a well-proportioned young man, Joe, would you get in there? I knew this was coming. Let him take your place. Oh, Hi, honey. <laughs> How are you, darling? <laughs> now, there's going to be a time when you have to photograph grandpa with granddaughter. Oh, so let's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Mud on. Remember, I get to edit this. I video. love this, yeah. <laughs> and when I say cut, we run out of here, and that's it. Okay. <laughs> so wait a minute now. Look at the balance. Joe is, is broader, uh, shoulder-wise and everything. I hope so. And when we look at petite, uh, Bethany and the broad shoulder, the balance is wrong. Either we're going to have to make her look bigger or make you look smaller. Good luck with that. Uh, well, I, well, I think we can do it. It's a miracle. Turn all the lights off. Okay, sweetheart, would you come out front? Just stay right there, Joseph. Yep. Come in front of him. That's it. Low shoulder, turn to him. Now, when we do that, not, not yet. Not yet. When we do that, I've just cut half of Joe off. No applause. <laughs> okay. Joe. So what this means, you're just going to have to walk like this in front of me all the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not even going to say it. Now, turn your nose. Right. Hold it right there. Sweetheart, lean back a little bit. Turn the nose. Oh, right there. Now, if Joe was really, really, let's say, obese, put your hand on your hip. Now we cut across his midsection, okay, and it, the balance becomes better if Joe was a bigger guy than he is, okay? So put both hands on your hips, okay? Turn that foot towards me. There you go. And again, turn the hip this way, open up the shoulder that way. Great. There's how you photograph the heavy set guy with the petite little girl. How about distance to the camera? Should that, you ever change that? Distance to the camera? Yes. I am not following you. Question. Like you wouldn't want me. No, no, here. no, no. Not shooting Would at you? F11. Yeah. 
And that's it. Now, if we had, let's say Joe was close to 300 pounds, had a huge stomach, I would take something, yeah, I would take something and have him put his foot on it, this foot here. Once he raises this foot and leans forward, this diminishes. This diminishes. I'm going to have to learn to walk this way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Joseph, thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Yes, always a pleasure. So when she was in this last position, he was in a masculine connotation, but she was in a feminine connotation because this was her far shoulder, this was her near shoulder, and she was turned to her, her high near shoulder. She was in a feminine composition, okay? So one, actually, one more question. When, Go ahead. When, uh, when you've got the second person here, how much, is the fill light, how much do you have to look out for the shadow that's going to be cast from the main light? Oh, for her. Right. Well, let's do it. So, we'll, so let's say take a she's look casting a shadow yes, on me. Yes, let's take Order a look at it. Phil, come on in. Why don't we use you for that? So okay. if you're backed up a little bit. Let me, let me just do positioning it. Positioning of the main light. Turn this one. Turn this one. With your feet. There you go. Let's get right in front. Turn even flatter. This way. With your feet. Okay. Hands on your hips. Lean back. No, no. I'm sorry. You step back from her and then lean forward at the waist. Okay? Back up this way. Lean forward, chin out here. Good. That's pretty good because from camera angle, you don't see the shadow side mm -hmm. here. So, so that's something you have to look out yes, for. Yes, be sure. careful that she doesn't cast the shadow onto his face. But in this case, it's, it's, it's fine, really. Okay, so which is her low shoulder? That one. Notice she posed her right hand lower on her hip than her left hand. Excellent. Another question. That's yes. a good question. In that scenario you're just talking about, with big guy, small mm -hmm. girl, what if it's the opposite? What if it's the opposite? Yes. Excellent. Okay. Okay. You're going to be the big girl. <laughs> I had to ask. Bill, have a seat. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I'm the guy. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Oh no, no, we want Phil. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Your name is Phil now. It, it was a good choice, though. She looks good. Uh, <laughs> oh, Phyllis? Yeah, she yeah. looks great. Okay. So here's the guy. You know, I'm getting a little mixed up. Here. I'm the big girl now. Yeah, okay. Uh, Come okay. on on this side. You step forward here. Uh -huh. Phil, you're not getting paid enough for this. Not enough. Step forward here. I want you to go behind his shoulder and put your arm under here. There you go. Turn this way. <laughs> I like that. You feeling weird yet? No, okay. not at all. I am. Tip it this way. <laughs> Me in a feminine pose. You guys aren't paying enough for this. Okay. <laughs> Joe, step a little bit this way behind his shoulder. There you go. So, uh, what's this? You're pulling out a gun? You're yeah. going to kill yourself. That's okay. <laughs> no, it's all right. <laughs> Jen well, is enjoying. By the way, you guys, no, no, the you guys have met the Jen before on camera. She's losing it over here. So. Okay. So, Joe, put your weight on your, your left foot. That's it right there. Lean forward. That's it, right there. Anyway, we can cover up. In fact, Joe looks balanced now with his husband. <laughs> no, but seriously, take a look now and come out from behind his shoulder and take a look at it. The balance would be definitely wrong, okay? So that's how you do it. And if you're sitting... <laughs> Phil's turning red. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, somebody else asked a question. Well, I'm trying to help these guys out, so good job, Phil. Good. Let's... Uh, <laughs> We only got a couple of minutes left, so let me do some romantic stuff together. You can uh, slip your shoes on. Please keep the questions coming. That, that was a very good question. The more we can use Joe the gorilla here, I would really appreciate it. Just hey, yeah, let yeah. me know. Okay, so let's do something romantic. Let's take this here. Ah. Frank, one other good question that just came through while Go. you were setting up. Um, what effect would changing kind of our big beauty dish here to a big soft box or an umbrella, how, what effect would that ch change on the lighting? Okay, right now we're using a parabolic, well, what we call a beauty dish. It's about 18 inches across, okay? What's the difference between using a 30 inch soft box in the same position at the same intensity and using a beauty dish, okay? the shadow that you see will either be blurred the edge or it will be sharp. And I'd like to show you why that is. 
Uh, Phil, just step out a minute. Sweetheart, just have a seat. Elbow up on the table, knees this way. Uh, isn't that nice? Okay, good. I'm gonna make this a little more dramatic. Turn the face this way. This way, yeah, tip. Right there, hold it right there. Can we have a close up of her face? Really in tight now. <laughs> Joe, yes, can sir. you set, shut the fill light off? Absolutely. Uh, let me go get it, hold on. You want the, you want the fill off? Yes. Okay. Okay. Chin down. Right now we have loop lighting. If we have a full face, I mean, yeah, there you go. Now notice the nose shadow that drops down here. And when you look at it, you can draw a pencil line as to where the shadow ends and where the highlight begins. Now, if this was a softbox, rather than a parabolic, if it was a bigger light source, we don't even have to say softbox versus parabolic. If it was a bigger light source physically, can we show this on camera? Good, Why, make a wide angle. This is really important, that's perfect. When I take this and point it towards the subject, I create the nose shadow that you've just seen, right? Okay. The part of the parabolic here lights this side, her right side of her cheek. The middle of the parabolic is lighting her nose. The edge of the light is looking around her nose, at this distance it can see around her nose, and is lighting the far cheek, that side. Okay? That's important to remember now. Now, if this softbox, instead of the parabolic being 18 inches, was this big, this edge light can see around even more and dilute the sharpness of that shadow. This is a weaker light, it's further away from the flash tube. This is a stronger light. This is even stronger. So, the highlights go from very bright, less bright, real weak, break into shadow, fill light only. So the larger the light source for that distance, the more the edge of the light can look around her nose and dilute the shadow. So what will you see? Instead of a sharp line, you will see a blurred edge. It'll be very soft. In fact, if you take a magnifying glass and look at every pore in her face, it'll have a highlight and a blurred shadow on the other side of the, of the pore. Or a sharp highlight and a sharp shadow on the other side of the pore. So, do we do this with grandma? No. Grandma will use a large softbox because it tends to flatten out the wrinkles and everything, make it look nice. Question. Okay, we got some more questions. Um, and and I'm, I, I really... You didn't prompt this one. I didn't prompt this one, and, and you guys are troublemakers. Uh, someone asked, how do you pose a large woman alone? You don't have her, you don't have somebody to hide her behind. Yes, I do. Repeat after me. Our father. <laughs> no. How do we pose it? Well, number one. If you have no props at all, okay? Mm -hmm. If I had a narrow tree here, we could kind of grab the tree and, and take off maybe a third, okay? By posing. Yep. The same way we did with Joe and his boyfriend. Take I keep easy, getting take mixed up. It yeah. easy, take okay? It easy. So we can, we can do that. But if we have no props, yep. and would you stand up? Flat to the camera, arms down at your sides, okay? So when we started, we said, we're going to turn the, the body, turn the body. Okay, now we turn her very slightly because she's so petite. But if she was a heavy set uh, model, turn her even more. Now, when you turn somebody that much, she looks way too thin for balance. But the heavy set girl looks much, much better. All right. So, so more of a turn. Continuing on, what do you do when you have a large height difference between the two people? Yes, that is really simple. Watch. Let's say Phil here is six foot five. We sit him down and we pose her next to him. Okay? Now, let's say, have a seat. Turn your body this way, knees crossed over the top. Okay, let's say Phil was six foot five, right? I'm five foot seven. 
So Phil is here and he's six foot five. Let's say he's six foot one and we only have to drop him maybe to five nine, five ten. If it's off camera, we crop just below the joint here, we have Phil st stretch out his ankles to make them wider. He drops down about three inches when he goes from this to this. Okay, so that's one way of doing it without being obvious. Okay, so now when you go out and you're on location and you're photographing these two in the shade of a tree, pick a tree that has lots of roots in the ground where you see it go like this. Yeah, for me it's generally a sequoia. A sequoia, yes, yeah. yes, oh yeah. We're going back to your roots, <laughs> <laughs> a sequoia. <laughs> All right, so if we, without talking to your clients and say, hey, you tall guy, come over here and stand in the hole. But when there's roots in the ground, it, it fluctuates quite a bit. We can pose her on the higher ground and maybe three inches low without them even realizing it, we drop him down to the right height. All right, one last question, because unfortunately we're just about out of time. And this is, it's a little bit different about posing, but it's something that comes up a lot when you've got somebody that's got one eye that's substantially and noticeably smaller than the other excellent, side. Excellent, excellent. Boy, we don't have that here. The girl is perfect. <laughs> Let me come over here. Okay, good. Have a seat. Flat to the camera. Let's, let's take a close-up of him. Actually, they're almost perfect, but we'll, we'll demonstrate anyway. Here, I can just stand here and go like this if you want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Look straight ahead there, Phil. Okay. So what's your approach? Okay. The approach is, let's say that his right eye was slightly smaller. It is, but it's hardly even noticeable, okay? I would make that the far eye. Don't try to correct it by turning him this way and making the larger eye in the back. It gets smaller to begin with when you turn him. So take the smaller eye, unless it's drastically smaller, and turn it to the back. So do this, put your elbow up on there, lean forward at the waist, okay? Let's get a good two-thirds on him. Turn your nose back to me, Phil. Phil, this way. More, Phil. This way. The other way. Towards me, Phil. There you go. All right. Good. Now, if this was noticeably smaller, we want the smaller eye as the farthest eye. The farthest from the camera. Closest eye, farthest eye. But that's a very good question. Normally, what I do when someone comes in my studio and they got a smaller eye, I can look at them from here, and then I look at them from the opposite angle. And it'll tell you which looks better. But most of the time, take the smaller eye and make it the far eye. So it's going to really depend on how much the difference in size is. Yes. If it's slightly smaller, make it the far eye. If it's a lot smaller, you're going to have to play. You're going to have yeah, to look, have at, to look at both sides. Best. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, we're, okay, a couple, a question about uh, how do you light with, uh, and again, this is going to be probably too much that we can handle today, but. How do you light with one light source indoors and a or, or no light source with a light meter? What kind of ratio are you going to look for, say, out in the environment? Let's say you're just doing ambient natural light. Yes. What are you going to look for positioning the subject just in ambient light? What kind of ratio are you going to look Without for? Without flash at all. Correct. Without flash at all. All we're going to do is just meter the ambient light. Real quick light. Let's say we meter the ambient light and it's an overcast day or you're in the shade of a tree. So you're in the shade of a tree come out towards the edge of the tree line, okay? Let's say that the light is directly above, okay? You're gonna have flat lighting, so change your angle of camera, okay? Move your camera angle so that the light has a direction, and you'll see the direction if you get on the edge of the tree line. Don't go back towards the trunk of the tree, because then you have no light direction at all, okay? Okay, two more at the end. In we're going to end up going a little bit over, but Go there's ahead. a couple good questions. Taking the, the eye one step further, what do you do when you've got somebody with the nose? Excellent, Thanks. excellent. Gee, I wish I could... Uh... I can fix that. Come here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I forget which side, do, which side do I... Which side do you break to? Slightly to that side. That's correct. Okay. My... Am I on camera? Yeah. Yeah. My nose turns slightly this way. You want to turn that bend toward the camera. In other words, I would go two-thirds this way. If I go two-thirds this way, and this is, this is bent this way, it, it personifies that look. 
you can see that it's bent. But if you turn the bend into the camera, it straightens it right out. So can we have a close-up? Let okay. me sit there a minute. Sure. Close-up of Frank. This is going to be scary. Okay. So look right to uh, Rick's gonna, camera's going to be live. Okay. So if I'm in two-thirds, I'm... There's your... There's your yeah, room. okay. If I'm in two-thirds, it should straighten out the hook. If I do this... And the bend is this way. It shows that it's bent. That I, makes I, it look bigger. I don't know. I don't know if you can actually see it. Oh yeah, you can see it on the okay. screen. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yep. But I. Okay. Have we got more? That's about it. Because you know you wanted to go over some of the shots we took. And, and I, I want to do one romantic pose with you. Real quick. Real quick. Come on. Guys, stay with. If you have to leave, by the way, uh, just give us a couple minutes. We're just going to take a little bit longer because this is really important that Frank wants to show you. And, uh, Sweetheart, again, have a seat. Remember, it's being recorded, so no Knees worries. that way. Elbow out here. Slide this way. That's it. Lean, lean down. Turn into profile. Put all your hair on the side. Straddle this. Get nice and close. Do it real quick. Go into profile, sweetheart. Brittany. Bethany. <laughs> I know. Uh, Go into profile. More. Move your elbow out that way, towards him. That's it. Move your chair out this way, Phil. I'm so sorry. what is it you're going go for here, Frank? I'm going I'm to go with two people where she's in profile. Lean, lean way forward here, man. Right here. Right there. Make your chair higher just by lifting it. Just lift it with your hands. Even higher. Do you want the uh, fill light back on? That's good. Okay. Extend your chin. Tip your top of your head this way. I'm sorry. Back a little bit. Bring your face in this way. Tip. Look at her. Right there. Can we bring a camera in here close? Do you want this light back on? Yeah, please. Not that it's important. Okay, so what, what's your goal with this main light now, what are you, with bringing it over here? Well, it's profile after? lighting on her like we showed before. Okay. Is she in profile there from that camera yep. angle? Yep. Okay. Get nice and close. Move in. That's it right there. A little happier. Here we go. Eyes here, sweetheart. Good. Let me see what that looks like. Chin up a little bit, Phil. A little happier, Phil. <laughs> Turn your nose more to Joe, Phil. There you go. Tip the top of your head back out this way towards me. That's it. Quiet, quiet. No, big, no teeth. There you go. Sweetheart, you can smile a little bit. That's nice. Right there. That, that's a, a very nice, that's a horizontal picture you are seeing, but I would make this vertical and it look, would look really nice. Phil, get closer with your chin to her. There it is, right there. Okay, that's all I wanted to do. Great. All right. Um, so, Rick, come on over here. What we're going to do is we, we took some of these shots. You, okay? you guys okay? Oh, yeah, great. Okay. <laughs> uh, we took some of these shots with these lighting patterns a little bit earlier. So, what, Frank, you're going to go through each of these, and, we're gonna, and Frank's going to show you the wrong right as we go through sequence. So, Jen, if you would just show my computer... And you will get these uh, pictures online for you to look at later. Okay, so let me go full screen on this. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so you can just right arrow to go through. Mm -hmm. Here we have uh, our young lady here, flat to the camera. Vertical lines for arms. The uh, line that goes down through the middle of her face lines up with a breastbone, boring, static. And now we, we turn the body a little bit. We have a far shoulder and a near shoulder, a high shoulder and a low shoulder. But we break one of the rules here. Her left hand in the photograph is higher than her right hand. Yet, it's the opposite of the shoulders. So you want to make it correct, we switch it. Her right, her right hand now is higher than her left hand. The right shoulder is higher than her left shoulder. And everything falls into line. Here we have a two-thirds, almost a two-thirds view, but notice how her right eye, the corner of her right eye, breaks the skin line, okay? And when we turn somebody that far, 
we usually distort her right eye. Her right now eye now is hiding behind the eyelid and is diminished. It's very small. So you can take a beautiful young model like this and, and really, you know, it doesn't do it justice. Let's go on. Now, here's almost two-thirds, but with the opposite problem. She's not turned enough. Notice the slice of ear that's hanging off her, her cheek. Not nice. Not nice. And then when we go and do it correctly, we have a good two-thirds. Don't show the ear. All right? Don't break the skin line. Let's go in closer. And when we get it just right, you'll notice to the right of her right eye, we have a nice curve in, that notch that gives her that chiseled look. If we move the camera or her face one way or the other just a little bit, that nice indentation there straightens out. Here's almost full face, but it's not full face. Notice one ear is larger than the other. It sticks out more than the other because she's not full face. Now she's full face. Now let's look at profile. In profile, we said we wanted the line that goes from her forehead down between her eyebrows, down her nose, to be a clean line, not interrupted by an eyebrow. Now, if a young lady comes in the studio and has one eyebrow all the way across, don't mention it, okay? Believe me. So here, this is correct, but look, her eye position, she's looking straight ahead. Notice you only see white triangles. That, that's not nice. So we go next. We shift her eyes about five to eight degrees towards camera. Now we see the round colored part of her eye and we still have exactly half of the face shown. Notice the lighting now. The lighting followed her from full face to two thirds to profile. So now the light is behind her face. Let's talk about hands. We're talking about the, from the elbow to the hand here. The other hand is uh, not to be talked about here. The wrist is always bent on the female and it's always bent into the body. Notice as we go down the forearm, the wrist is bent towards the body and then the hand flares, flares towards the camera position. The wrist is always bent. So the top hand now, the fingers are flared and we get a nice, uh, very uh, classical look to the hands. Here is a, uh, a good photograph of a young lady sitting, sitting on the edge of the chair. Notice she's got her right leg over her left leg so that the shoe, if it was in the picture, is not pointing toward the camera and gets bigger, unusually big. Oh, one more thing. Never let the elbows get too close to the waistline. Her elbows are, are actually directed by me, her right elbow, away from her waistline so that it makes her waistline visible, okay? Now we're switching to the guy. Here's Phil, straight on, vertical lines for his arms, boring and static. He turns now, his far shoulder, near shoulder. The only thing wrong with this is he's got his right hand high and his left hand low. That's contradictory to his shoulder angle. Now it looks a lot better. The low hand matches the low shoulder, the high hand, the high shoulder. But still we got the head tilt problem. He's in a feminine competi competition, uh, composition. It's easy for you to say. Easy for me to say. Now he tilts towards his far low shoulder. Now he looks masculine. Again, a close up, not full face. Notice the imbalance of ears. Two thirds. We, we hide that one ear. Let's talk about hands. That his right hand there being vertical it doesn't work. Anything vertical, horizontal doesn't work. So let's look at horizontal. It really doesn't work. When we, when we turn it at a 45 degree angle like that, it looks much better than A or B before it. Again, his elbows are slightly out by direction. And that's it. I think that's it. These will be available online for you to take a look at. All right. Let me just check to see if there are any other questions we got here. By the way, if you guys were curious, what we were doing is when we were shooting, uh, we used the color checker passport first, and we created a color profile for the camera and the lights and did a white balance. So you saw the images coming in with the preset in Lightroom. 
that they were automatically getting color corrected. Uh, a couple of you asked about uh, doing another webinar, but actually do uh, an outside one with both formal and informal situations. Great idea. We still have snow on the ground here. In fact, we were talking about this just, just earlier today. So uh, yes, when it gets a little warmer around and we have some uh, nice plants to play with, then we'll do that. We could do penguins. We could do penguins. You can do penguins. Um, Frank, and that's another subject for another day in more detail. Uh, somebody did ask about what color background you prefer. Just real quick. Real quick, real quick. Oh, real quick, real quick. I prefer three color backgrounds. Are you ready? Write them down. The first one is green. And I'll explain why. The second one is green. There's $50 to the winner of the first one. Text me what the third one is. He's in a rut. It's already yeah. in. It's green. Let me tell you why. Because green makes skin tones for all races look warmer and richer. If we could take a picture of her on this brown background and then do it on a green background, okay? I'm talking about an old master's green background. You will see the color difference. It makes, it's an illusion. It makes the skin tones warmer and brighter. Okay? All right. Good question. Great. Yes. Phil, get over here. You bet Phil back on camera. I, I want to thank uh, Bethany and Phil both for putting up with me and for Frank. Uh, for Frank, thank you so much. I know that was a lot. That was actually a lot in a very short period of time, and there's a lot to follow. But if you guys replay the video um, and, and watch what Frank did and watch the position of the heads and what's happening with the light, It'll really go a long way towards making your portraits better. And again, it applies here in a studio situation or in one of those informal outside things. If you see a pose that works, even if you're not going to pose them, maybe you've got a long lens and you're sniping from across a, a hall in a reception hall, when you see somebody uh, do that pose naturally, your eye will start to learn what's going to make somebody look their best. And when people look their best as a photographer, what happens? They buy more stuff. <laughs> yes, you want, that's the whole idea. You want to sell some more photographs. So again, Frank, thank, thank you. you so much. It's a pleasure. Uh, I know there's a lot in a short period of time, so review it. Give us 24 hours or so to edit, edit the video and upload it. And we'll also make the still images available so that you can see the rights and the wrongs and, and compare them as well. So that's it for today. We ran over a little bit, but thank you guys for watching. And hope to see you online again soon. Till then, be well. Thanks a lot. <laughs>